Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to another game of Chessable Masters 2020. This is part of Magnus Carlsen tour organized on the platform chess24.com. Uh, and today I would like to show you the game between Daniel Dubov. So again, Daniel Dubov, I show you, uh, just show you another game of Daniel where he won with Magnus Carlsen. Uh, Daniel is number 12 in the world in rapid time control. He's ranking 2770 he is 24 years old and he's gonna play as black uh, and his opponent Vladislav Artemiev number 13 in the world 2769 this is his rapid ranking uh, and he is 22 years old and he's gonna play as white uh, so both are grandmasters from Russia respectively number three and number four in Russia so without further ado let's see what happened on the board we have knight on f3 by Artemiev d5 ready opening d4 so transposing knight on f6 uh, c4 e6 so uh, queen's gambit declined and now of course white can play knight on c3 uh, can play catalan g3 can play bishop on g5 classical variation exchange c takes on d5 all of this is possible however we have e3 which of course is of also one of the most popular moves moves uh, and here bishop on e7 is the most popular c5 is possible c6 is also possible but we have a6 by Dubov uh, and b3 by Artemiev so uh, Artemiev built this very very solid structure and uh, of course black have to do something about that c5 is the most uh, active move uh, and it's the same idea like in the Tarash defense so attack the center create the isolated uh, queen spawn uh, maybe hanging pawns and they continue to play against them uh, we have bishop on d3 developing a knight on c6 and now bishop on b2 so uh, setting up this powerful uh, pair of bishop which can be very very dangerous uh, we have c takes on d4 e takes on d4 and now queen a5 with check uh, knight b on d2 and now bishop on a3 the idea is to exchange the one of these powerful full bishops are pair of these bishops can be can be really dangerous so that's the idea and also it was already played uh, in the games before a bishop took on a3 however Artemiev uh, play something what was not played yet on the top level a uh, queen on c1 defending the bishop and also uh, threatening to take the bishop on a3 so we have bishop on b2 queen on b2 d takes on c4 and b takes on c4 and now uh, let's uh, stop for the moment on this position white gonna play with the very very classical hanging pawns and this is the known structure usually uh, it happens uh, when it's played in the Queen's Gambit decline, but also it's possible in Sicilian defense, for example, um, in Awapin variation. Uh, also is in some uh, variations of Petrov, it's also possible. So it's not only for the D4 players, but it also can be useful knowledge for, for E4 players. Now, the idea for Black uh, is to exchange as many pieces as possible as white can have very very active pieces and also block these dangerous guys okay they are together and they enjoy to stay next to each other they are stronger and black would love to you know uh, make them move so for example if this pawn moved to to c5 which doesn't make much sense uh, however uh, it's very easy to blockade these pawns okay so for example this knight can blockade on c6 um, and put the pressure on d4 and another knight could jump on on d5 and and be very happy here if dark square bishop is still on the board also uh, could join for example this way to put the pressure because this d4 pawn would have no friend okay no friend uh, to help to support from e3 so this is the idea and for white uh, white would like to keep the the pawns like this but it's very very dynamic pair of pawns so these pawns uh, should be pushed in the right moment uh, and very often it ends up with the with the power 
past pawn. So we've seen already one game on my channel not long time ago uh, with the past pawn created from the from the isolated queen's pawn. However, here is the more classical uh, way of doing this because we already have the hanging pawns. Uh, we have castle by Dubov, castle by Artemiev, and now what would you play as black? Uh, probably b5 would be the best idea. Uh, just forcing, maybe forcing this um, this c5 move. So this would be pretty beautiful. However, the problem is that b5 is now controlled three times. Okay, so this is the problem. Uh, so first rook on b8, preparing b5. Uh, but now we have knight on e4. Uh, asking to exchange the knights, as this knight was not not really active, uh, and this knight is always uh, quite strong in the in the defense. So uh, Dubov doesn't have much choice. Knight on e4, bishop on e4, uh, and now we have the first threat in the game. Bishop can take on c6. Okay. If black plays some, you know, slow move, something like, I don't know, h6, the problem is, of course, uh, this rook. This rook is hanging. So black have to react somehow. We have bishop on d7, defending the knight, but also connecting the rook. So very, very important move. Uh, and here we have d5. So finally, we have d5 uh, moving the pawn. So we're going to see what's going to happen. We have e takes on d5, c takes on d5, and now knight on e7. And here, uh, for example, white could play d6, but after knight on c6, rook a on d1, as you see, uh, the pawn is blocked, and this is how you play against that pawn. So, uh, Artemiev uh, tries to play something different. We have knight on e5. Uh, harassing the bishop, uh, however, is not the problem because the knight in this position is is better than the light square bishop. So that would be, you know, in black's favor to exchange. Uh, so uh, we have rook f on d8. Rook f on d8, of course, defending as this was uh, also the threat. So have to defend and exchanging, as I said, is much better. Uh, now we have rook f on d1. Always put the rook behind your passed pawn, uh, and it doesn't matter you play with this past pawn or against the past pawn it's always good to have the rook behind uh, we have knight on g6 now uh, asking to exchange the knights but Artemiev is not interested this knight is uh, too powerful so knight on c4 harassing the queen uh, and queen uh, gonna remaneuver queen c7 and after rook a on c1, queen lands on f4. Uh, and here actually white could play immediately bishop on g6. And after h takes on g6, knight b6. Uh, then for example, this pawn uh, can march to a5 and make this outpost. And it's uh, almost, you know, impossible to remove the knight. This knight would control a c8, so the, the rook cannot come there. Also c7, also protect the pawn, a uh, really powerful idea. However, Artemiev tries to set up the trap, so improve a bit of this position and place queen on d4. And now this is the uh, this is the trap. So, for example, if black plays something, okay, rook b on c8, let's say that the problem is bishop on g6, and after exchanging the queens, win the pawn. Okay, one pawn, uh, but of course one pawn is very often, you know, enough to win the game. So uh, this is the idea of queen on d4. The problem is actually Dubov could set up the counter trap and play uh, rook on e8. Rook on e8, very nice idea because now uh, after taking the knight we would have rook on e1 with check. Okay, uh, so this rook, which protecting the the queen, would have to take the rook, uh, and after queen on d4. Bishop f7, it's it's quite complicated, but it's good for black, but it's a lot of complications and a lot of calculations. So uh, probably this is why Dubov didn't go for that. Bishop f7, king f7, now knight e5 um, attacking the king. Of course, king cannot come here because the, the queen would be lost and the white would win the game. So king on g8 and knight on d7. And this position would have to be played uh, by black, okay? Uh, it's, of course, better to have the the queen for the knight and the and the rook uh, however as you see it's still playable but definitely counter trap uh, would be very nice dubov prefers to play something easier and he plays f5 
f5. f5, of course, is enough. Uh, the knight cannot be taken now. Uh, bishop f3. We have queen on d4, so exchanging the queens. Rook on d4, and now b5. So uh, b5 is ready, and Dubov wants to create the passed pawn on his own. Uh, we have knight on a5. And now knight on e5 by Dubov, uh, attacking the bishop, but actually exchanging this knight for the bishop wouldn't be the great, great idea. Dubov wants to actually move the knight to f7 and to d6. That's the idea, uh, because the pawn, uh, as Aaron Nimtsovich said, uh, it's the very dangerous criminal, so it should be stopped uh, at all costs, okay? So here, uh, this idea is still alive, even, you know, 100 years later. Uh, we have d6, so now the idea is not possible to play. Rook b on c8, confronting the rook, and now Artemiev play quite inaccuracy, maybe even the blunder, which can cost him a game. Rook on c7, rook on c7, this was played, and now feel free to pause the video, what would you play as black? There is only one move uh, which you're gonna make a, you know, better position for black uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So there is actually only one move which can improve black position because uh, white have very, very active position, okay? Uh, Actually, it's very easy. Rook on c7. Rook on c7. And after d takes on c7, rook c8, and it's no way to, to defend the pawn. White can try some tricks, like let's say knight on c6, attacking the, the knight, but knight f3, gf3, rook c7, it's won. Uh, if try something else, like I don't know, bishop on d5, king f8, f4, kick the knight, uh, and then bishop on c6. Uh, still, bishop e6 and this pawn is impossible to defend, okay? Uh, you can try like a4, uh, exchange some pieces, but at the end, black gonna win this pawn. And now black gonna be attacking side, so with this passed pawn, uh, it's very possible that Dubov uh, would even win the game. However, for some reason, uh, probably because of the of the time, it's a rapid time control, just a reminder, we have bishop on e6. And this actually is the blunder. So uh, again, feel free to pause the video and find the only winning move for white while I enjoy my cup of tea one more time. Okay, ready? So the move, this is the only move uh, and it's definitely winning. Just bishop on d5 as this bishop goes after the pawn and two connected uh, passed pawn would be very dangerous. Bishop on d5. Uh, forcing to exchange the bishops because the bishop is pinned so uh, cannot move. So this was played by Vladislav Artemiev. We have bishop on d5, rook on d5 uh, and now knight on f7 as the knight is under attack. So knight on f7 and after knight on c6, uh, Daniel Dubov resigned the game and he resigned because he cannot do anything here. Okay, the knight gonna jump to e7, win the rook. Uh, if you move the king, for example, king on f8, uh, then knight on d8, winning this um, this rook, and after rook on d8, rook f5, now winning the the knight. So it's just pointless to play with the with the up the rook. Uh, of course, this would be a checkmate, but white uh, goes with the check, so still have time, you know, uh, to bring the king or even this way bring the king to the game. Uh, also, knight on d6 doesn't work because after knight on d6, knight e7, as I said, winning the rook. Okay, now king on f8, knight on c8, uh, and now after rook on c8, let's say, rook c8, uh, winning even this knight. Okay, so this is also losing. Uh, and finally, uh, the last possibility, if you try a rook on c7, the most obvious maybe, d takes on c7, and now if you take the rook, of course we have promotion, so uh, not really possible. Uh, so you, you, don't have, you don't have moves. If you move here, you're gonna lose the rook, and uh, yeah. The, the knight gonna uh, control the c8 and, and, and promotion is coming anyway if the rook goes somewhere else. So rook on d, 
uh, five and making the queen rook d8 can can retreat but of course it doesn't work as well queen up of course is winning so this is why after knight on c6 Daniel Dubov resigned the game and once more time I would like to show you group A standing so after day number one Vladislav Artemiev three and a half points Daniel Dubov just behind Daniel won against Magnus Carlsen and Magnus and Hikaru Nakamura two and a half points Alexander Grishuk two and Pentala Hare Krishna one and a half points uh, so that's the standings and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press and like and if you don't want to miss any other analysis from uh, from this tournament and other tournaments as well uh, press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one